It's that time of the year again. All right, it's uh, that time of the year again where we put the side-by-side -side away, we kind of hunker down for winter, and uh, we pull the old Challenger out of the back storage into the main area here, and we start working on it. So if this is the first time joining our channel, uh, we've been working on this car for quite some time. You can uh, go back and check out all the previous build episodes. Just kind of a quick recap of uh, last year, we ended up... Uh, Putting the roof on, we got the floor pan in. I can't remember if I did the quarter last year or not. It's all a bit of a blur now, but working on this thing so long. Anyway, we got the floor complete up to the bottom of the firewall. There's lots of work needed to uh, get that firewall back in order. I had some parts. Uh, yeah, I managed to get some parts if you can believe that. So I've got the inner fenders some of the brackets for it I have two quarters I finally got that rear valence dual exhaust tips so I can finally finish buttoning the back end of the car up we've been slowly making our way from the back of the car to the front fixing all the issues as we go along so what remains is the firewall the cowl up top here the front sills there's a couple of spots here in the front frame rails that need to be replaced um, these inner fenders uh, I have replacements for those so those are going to come out and then once that's complete that's pretty much it for bodywork so I'm really really hoping that if I can stay on this project throughout this winter that uh, we can get this whole section of the car complete and then maybe by uh, maybe by spring or summer we'll be able to uh, put this thing on a rotisserie give it a good sandblast and then uh, hit it with some primer first order of business we're gonna get these big heavy doors off once we get those out of the way this k-frame is coming out and that way there we'll have a lot of room to start working on this mess. And oh boy, it's a mess. If you've ever taken one of those off, you know exactly how heavy they are. Those things are beefy. Okay, so that was uh, simple enough. There's uh, three bolts on the inside. So those two holes right there, inside. One big one at the top on the inside. Two in the bottom two on the top and then you can see what I did is I had a floor jack there just waiting I kept the door hinged and uh, once I removed the bolts kind of brought it out put it on top of the floor jack and then you can uh, take them off quite easily now the other side I kind of messed up I forgot the uh, I forgot to take this top one out so I had to go back and uh, and get that and it started to sag a little bit but I had the floor jack there so we caught it these doors are in remarkable shape for the year. Uh, it's really quite impressive. There's little to no rust on the bottoms of these guys. They're in really, really nice shape. Yeah, these will these will clean up real nice. Hit them with the sandblaster. I have to take a large dent out of the uh, driver's side, but other than that, these doors are, uh, are going to be good to go. I've left all the glass in so far. To be honest, I'm terrified of taking these uh, these doors apart with all the the levers and the window regulators and just all the the rods and everything. There's just so much going on in there, and <laughs> so I've just kind of left it all these years. Okay, moving on. Next up, I want to get this K-frame out of here. Uh, 
from what I can understand, most of this you can just leave assembled as is. And I believe there's just probably four large bolts holding this in. Let me take a look here. <clears throat> yeah, so it's held in. Let's see if we can see that. Yeah. So there's going to be four of those guys. And there's one tucked in there. Two per side. The torsion bars will need to get uh, pounded out of the uh, the cross member. I'm not exactly sure the details of that, but we'll figure it out as we go. And then the upper uh, A arms. There's going to be a bolt, uh, bolt on both sides. The shock has to come out. Okay, so we'll take that shock out, get this upper A arm out, um, and then there's this bar here for the lower control arm, and then we should be able to just uh, should be able to just drop that out. All right, I'll start picking away at it. Yeah, so just a quick correction, my mistake. Those front arms, whatever they are, if you know what these things are, just drop a comment down below. They connect to the the lower A arms. And uh, that's just part of the K-frame, so we can just leave that all there. Don't have to worry about taking it off. If you know what those things are called, drop a comment below for me. That was a lot more challenging than I expected, getting those uh, A-arm bolts out. Um, they were rusted in there pretty good. I mean, it's a 40-some uh, year old car, so they've probably never been removed, so I'm not entirely surprised. Anyway, we got them out. Next thing I need to do is tackle these torsion bars. We have to uh, remove them from those control arms and they go all the way back into, uh, connect way back underneath the frame there. So I did a little bit of looking online and uh, this is what I found. So I found a video online and a guy had some kind of a clamp that looks very similar to this. I just finished making this guy. So the idea is the torsion bar will um, slide into that slot. You put this down on you clamp that thing down and then this section here, you can give that a good whack with the hammer and then uh, drive those torsion bars back. So I'm gonna bolt this thing on and uh, we'll see if it works. Okay, one more thing before we start actually, we're gonna take these bolts out here. They put some kind of a preload tension onto the, uh, the torsion bars. So we're just gonna, yeah. We're just gonna get under there and uh, pop that guy out so that when we start to pound this torsion bar back, um, we're not gonna have any load on that thing and it's not gonna like pop and spring out and hit us in the face or something crazy as it twists around. Okay, so I'm just gonna buzz those out first. One more thing actually. Okay, let me try and hold this still. See that clip in there? You gotta take that out first. I'm gonna pop that out now. That came out way better than I expected. Okay, just finished getting that guy out of there. 
had to uh, put the heat to the front one here and uh, lots of penetrating fluid and that seemed to do the trick and then just hammered away at that guy and finally popped out so yeah that seemed to have uh, done the trick now I don't have uh, torches or anything so what I use for heat is uh, this guy right here this uh, flameless heat system mini ductor so you take this wire you just wrap it around whatever you're trying to uh, heat up and then just hit the button and away you go works pretty good oh yeah I'll finish getting that out that torsion bar and then uh, we're gonna drop that k-frame next That is one heavy pig. My gosh. I can see why people switch over to something a little bit more modern. Save a lot of weight maybe. I don't know. Anyway, those bolts came out nice. No issues there. So yeah, there we have it. K-frame is out. Got a lot of space in this engine bay now for working. All right, first order of business is getting this inner fender removed. Um, I'm gonna get that out of the way so that I can get access to the uh, to the firewall, which is gonna be the first section that I want to start tackling in this uh, front corner repair. So I've got my air chisel ready to go. I'm gonna knock out all the spot welds around this um, suspension mount and probably down in here as well. I'm going to knock it out with the air chisel and then when I come into this uh, front uh, section here I'm going to use my spot weld cutter just because I really don't want to mangle it too too much whereas this stuff here don't really care and um, yeah well there'll be a line of uh, spot welds along the bottom there that I'll, I'll take out with the spot weld cutter too okay I'll start uh, getting at her Well, that wasn't too difficult. Um, I had to switch over my bit for my spot weld cutter because it was dull, but other than that, uh, things went well. So, I suspected this was the case, but uh, now confirms it. This is quite rotten up in here. So I'll need to um, probably make a new plate for this bracket. <laughs> One interesting thing, let's see if I can see it that uh, this support bracket here really isn't connected to the upper shock mount at all you can see where there is spot welds but it's either rotted out over time or maybe right from factory it never really uh, connected anyway lots of room now to work on the firewall I just went at that with the air chisel. I knew this was rotten, so I really wasn't worried about making a big mess. And then the bottom here, this is a big heavy section of frame, so it's you can just go at that and you don't have to worry about really the frame at all. You can just buzz that other stuff out pretty easy. Um, yeah, so I'll start doing some uh, cleanup work. Oh yeah, one other thing, yeah, this bracket here for the rad you can see this is quite rotten so imagine this whole 
piece here. I'll just probably cut that right out, make a new one. Once I get over into this section, this is all bubbling for with rust as well. So yeah, fix that. I put a uh, bracket on here, just a little support bracket. So this thing is going to uh, stay in place for when I replace that inner fender. Just keeps things located where they should be. Okay, it's a little bit of a mess, but um, we'll get this cleaned up.